Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be all about my third trimester and if you're new here then I do new videos every week um, and I have been, uh, I have done a first trimester update and a second trimester update so this is my third trimester. At the moment I am actually 35 weeks pregnant and very large um, but what I want to do so over the next few months I so right now I'm actually batch filming a load of content to ensure that I still have content going up when I go you know for as soon as I hit labor and um, onwards so for a few for a couple of months just so that it gives me a chance to you know um, settle into motherhood um, but still I, I still want to have content going up for you guys so instead of two videos a week like normal it will be going down to one video a week but there will be content going up every week so if you're new here then definitely subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the videos they are going to be a lot about the end part of my pregnancy and pregnancy tips so um yeah and then I've got other videos going up as well so yeah definitely subscribe so you don't miss out so this video is going to be really laid back um I am in my third trimester and very uncomfortable you'll probably notice that throughout these videos next few videos I am quite breathless um at the moment um and that's just part of pregnancy um so i'm just going to talk about what i've kind of been going through and probably just touch on a few things that you know a few items that have been helping me um throughout this trimester as well so firstly i wanted to talk about books i have been reading a lot in this trimester i've been trying to rest up as much as possible um i still have a few weeks hopefully until I uh, do go into labour but I want to be as fully prepared as possible and the two books that have really been helping me throughout this pregnancy so if you watch my first trimester video um, one of my must haves was this book and I've been reading it throughout my pregnancy and it's been so helpful and it's The Bump Class um, you, I think I got this in WH Smith you could probably get it online I'll link it down below um, if you can um, it's just so informational and it's not just on um, your pregnancy it's also uh, after pregnancy and tips for you know raising a child and having a newborn and stuff like that so this one's been really ri just so helpful and um, I just really enjoyed this book and the new one that I'm reading is a, a book that has been lended to me um, by my sister-in-law and it's the birth skills book by Juju Sundins and this is amazing and um, I'm actually not that far into it I've only kind of this much into it but it's just quite informational you know knowledge is power for me in this whole labor process this book uh, it, you know it's kind of you know it's proven pain management techniques for your labor and birth and it's tips that I just haven't read online at or before you know there's kind of tips that you know through each contraction your body is actually releasing a load of adrenaline um, and if you don't get rid of that adrenaline it's just gonna stay there and your pain is gonna get worse for throughout each contraction so it tells you some techniques to still stay calm but get rid of that adrenaline. For example, moving your legs and moving your feet and moving parts of your body that you can still move about in in labor. Um, so it's kind of little tips like that that is gonna help you through the pain in labor. Um, and I'm finding it just really great to um, read. One thing in here that has really shocked me, I read the other day though, like I haven't actually seen a diagram of this before but it tells you so it's really informational uh, like educational of the body as well and um, through labor and what your body is actually doing so you know that helps kind of un make you understand what's going on but this diagram shows you how your cervix grows throughout labor so this is one centimeter and this is 10 centimeters which is really shocking i haven't seen a diagram like this um so it's really nice to kind of understand what's going on through labor but um but yeah 
So this book is really good. So if you can get your hands on it, then I definitely recommend this one. So throughout my pregnancy, I've also tried and been trying to practice hypnobirthing. Um, I haven't been going to any classes or anything because they are extortionate prices. Um, but I have been, like I said, reading some books, reading online and um, practicing you know, from YouTube and so on, like watching other people's videos and um, immersing myself in positive birth stories. Um, and one of the things that has actually really helped is this app called uh, the Hypnobirthing app. Um, and basically it's just this app and you get a couple of them free so you can download and check it out what it's like. Um, but um, I decided to buy the entire track and it was only so the entire series for the hypno birthing and it, it was only like six pounds so not expensive expensive at all um, and you've got I think there's like six tracks so it's something like a pounder track and you've got a hypno birthing track the sleep track I listen to a lot it helps you kind of breathe and um, I put it on when I go to bed to kind of just lock everything in to my brain and just make sure I'm doing stuff every day um, but we've also got hypnosis for the birth partner so they can learn what you're learning um, whether that's you know your other half or a sister or a mother or you know whoever's going to be there with you they can listen to this also so that they can help you through the birth Oh, this is my first video I'm filming today and I'm already knackered. Okay, so something that I've been struggling with throughout the third trimester and the second trimester to be fair, throughout most of it since the belly's been growing is stretching pains. And uh, especially at first I was feeling them like round ligament pain it's called in your sides and it was quite painful. And then it got to a point where my belly was getting so big but my belly button my belly button is stretched out now that I don't have a belly button and it's so sensitive around that area that like the skin around that area it feels almost like he in in there is pushing on it so often it's kind of bruised from the inside so it feels really sore um but one thing I have literally mentioned this in probably every single pregnancy video is bio oil Get yourself some sort of stretch cream if not for your stretch marks because i don't have any stretch marks i don't know whether that's because um of my genetics or because um i have been using this i don't know um but i haven't got any stretch marks but this also just soothes my belly for some reason it just really just I, I like to rub this on my belly it's a way to connect with your baby as well and I just rub it around my belly button especially and it just soothes that pain and takes that achiness away for a little bit so um, if you're having the same kind of problems with um, stretching pains and um, then definitely bio oil it up another thing to mention is get someone to massage you um my I am now kind of feeling real pains in my um, lower area, um, definitely my pubic bone. Um, he is already head down um, and kind of engaging. Um, everybody, my midwife has said how my belly has dropped and literally everyone that sees me is like whoa your belly's so big and has definitely dropped so every, everybody thinks I'm going to be early but we'll see you know most first time mums are late so we'll see if I'm early but he is you know 435 weeks I feel like he's massive um and yeah we'll see if he's early but what we've been doing me and Craig every night he will give me a bit of a back rub on the lower back I will go on my yoga ball and um, stretch out and he will rub my lower back and this helps so much um, with the tailbone so I really just that whole downstairs area is just hurting he can't really do much for the front side but he can for the tailbone area and it seems to just loosen everything up as well and um, I would also just say to just stay active. I definitely noticed that um, the days that I'm just laying around in bed, I end up kind of like tightening up and not being that 
like uh, it, it's, it's more sore down there because I haven't been active however if I'm too active and I go out I have had like a shopping trip like a few weeks ago and um, if I'm too active then I also still hurt so just make sure you're moving around even if it's just around the house and um, go up and down the stairs it hurts but it's better in the long term kind of thing um, it I have to say it is hard for me to walk up and down the stairs not only is it hurting in um, you know it's sore in my downstairs area and my legs uh, it's a lot of weight that I'm carrying and he is also up in my lungs as well sometimes and takes my breath away so much so you know going up and down the stairs is a chore um, but make sure you're doing you know you're doing you're walking around and you know staying active this is also going to help the baby kind of engage and make labor a little bit easier as well so yeah just stay active <laughs> i'm trying to as much as i just want to lay around and not do anything when i am laying around though um it's not like it's comfortable either um sorry i'm not really selling this pregnancy thing but i'm just trying to be as honest as possible but laying around isn't easy because i have just this ball <laughs> on me so um laying on my back if i lay kind of not on my back but like just upright like this and sit back a bit he ends up kind of coming more up towards my lungs and then i can't breathe properly um or it's difficult to breathe um and it's uncomfortable um if i lay on my side my belly kind of stretches over and that's really uncomfortable um obviously I can't lay on my front they're the only two positions I can really lay like um but um I just wanted to mention again these pillows so I have two pregnancy pillows so I have this pregnancy wedge and I have this um pregnancy dreamy pillow which I mentioned in my second trimesters video now in my second trimester video I kind of said how this was good but it wasn't working for me that much I take that back now it is the dream i have fallen asleep with this every night and i don't know what i'd do without it it's my best friend like i can't sleep without it um i definitely fit completely in the middle this supports my back and then this allows you know support for my belly as well as um i i can't not lay I feel like if I don't lay with the pillow in between my legs, I feel like I'm crushing his head almost. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, so I definitely need like a pillow in between my legs when I sleep. So this literally ticks all those boxes and oh, I love it so much. He, This is my best friend. So definitely grab one of them, especially if you're in your third trimester. I think I was just using it too early before. And then this one is great just for, especially when I'm on the sofa or um, if I'm around someone's house or uh, I took it to the cinema with me several weeks ago. It's just so good for going out and about and traveling and the car. This is great for the car. Um, and you can use it so many ways. I've spoken about it in so many different videos. Um, but yeah, it's just a pregnancy wedge. You wedge it underneath your bump and it's so comfortable at night and um, you can put it in between your legs as well and obviously um behind your back and it just adds that extra support and if you don't want to get one of these dream genie pillows then definitely invest in this this is like 15 pounds and it helps you so much and what you can do at night when the dream genie wasn't working for me i'd put this in between i put this under my bump and that helped and then I would put a pillow in between my legs so you know it does the same job as the dream genie um for half the price so a couple more things I wanted to mention about my third trimester so I had a bit of a um pregnancy diabetes scare I think it's called gestational diabetes um or well, I say scare it's absolutely normal if you have gestational diabetes um and you know it's is it's, it's absolutely fine it will it should just go away after your pregnancy as well um but i was just really worried that um, my baby was getting really big i wasn't feeding my baby the right nutrients and and so on um but it turns out i don't have gestational butt diabetes however i still do have a high sugar intake in my kidneys 
no sorry I have a high sugar intake in my urine which actually is a sign that perhaps I have leaky kin leaky kidney syndrome or, or so on so it's um it's nothing to worry about because I am growing at the normal rate um but yeah basically it's you know it's absolutely fine i have high sugar in my urine but it shouldn't be really affecting the baby um it's just just something that happens so sometimes you know i went for the test the diabetes test but sometimes you might not even have that it might be that your kidneys aren't you know there's too much pressure on your kidneys because of the baby um and that is why you have sugar in your urine it doesn't necessarily mean diabetes well not in my case anyway um but yeah i went for the test and that was oh that was just not fun so i had to fast from 10 o'clock the night before so from 10 o'clock i didn't eat until 12 o'clock the next day basically um which when you're pregnant that is not easy because you're hungry a lot um so I fasted and then nine o'clock in the morning is when I went to have my test. So I went there, uh, they do your test straight away. Um, so they took a vial of blood um, and then you have to sit and wait for two hours and you have to sit and do nothing, no activity except for maybe getting up and going to the toilet. Um, but apart from that, yeah, just I sat there, I read some magazines for two hours and then um, again you're not allowed to eat in this time oh and they give you a glass of um it's like water but it's um what's it called? it's glass it's glucose in it so you down this pint of glucose as well so you've got that going around your system but no other food um and then yeah two hours later you have your next you know blood test and then you can eat and then they test the two you know how your body's reacting to the glucose basically um but yeah it wasn't fun so if you could try and avoid it by eating healthily from the beginning then do so okay so two more things that i've been struggling with through this um uh, trimester is one is um heartburn i've definitely had heartburn and kind of indigestion just kind of belly aches not so much belly aches but i kind of get like this real kind of chest heartburn and um in my in my throat as well and it's it's just not nice um but it's just where he's there and he's pushing everything and then i eat something i find it's definitely worse when i eat and drink certain foods and drink so if i um crisps aren't great so if i have a packet of crisps i seem to get a lot of heartburn also orange juice is not my friend if i have a glass and i only have like a small glass like a a little glass um but if i have that then i just seem to have heartburn for the rest of the night um so i'm kind of steering clear of those two things at the moment um because they just seem to give me so much heartburn they're just not agreeing with me um when i do get heartburn i tend to at first i was having um like a glass of milk or um uh, some yogurt uh, just to kind of cool everything down kind of you know so it works like Gaviscon but you know I'm not taking Gaviscon um, but I actually then heard that that makes it worse so I've stopped doing that um, but it kind of just gives that short term relief um, but the other thing that um, is supposed to work is tonic water so I've been drinking tonic water when I feel this heartburn now <laughs> I don't like tonic water. I think it just does not taste good. I don't like it. It's got like a nice sweet lemonade taste at first, but that aftertaste is ugh. But when I'm having the heartburn, I will just kind of have some tonic water and it does seem to kind of just tone it down a little bit. Um so um this is just, you know, maybe you like tonic water and if you do, then um maybe try this if you're suffering from heartburn. I wouldn't say I'm suffering, but it's there and um when it's there, I've been drinking tonic water to try and calm it down. And this was a tip from my mother-in-law actually. Oh, one more thing. If you've been watching my Instagram stories, you'll know about this already, but a shoehorn. Oh my god. Get yourself a shoehorn when you're in your third trimester. So I am at the point now where I can't touch my, I can't touch my toes 
at all. Um, and um, getting my trainers on, most other shoes are fine, but getting my trainers on is such a chore. But then all you want to wear is your trainers in the third trimester. And Craig is not around all the time, you know, or I don't have people around all the time. So it's not nice feeling like dependent on other people to get dressed. But what I found is having a shoehorn means that I can stick my trainers on myself without having to bend down or hurt myself or anything like that. So I just wanted to mention this. They're like five pounds from Amazon. Um, get an extra long one so you can literally just, um, you don't have to bend down at all. Um, this will help you so much. It's just a little trick um, that, I don't know, I don't think everyone thinks of. So, you know, if you're watching this and you see this, then it might help you. So get yourself one of these. And then lastly, I just wanted to talk about swelling. So this is something that is quite difficult for me. My, most women, pregnant women say that their feet swell. and But my feet aren't swelling. It's my hands. My hands have swollen up so much. Like they, they feel really sore at the moment. Um, you know, like when you're in a hot country and um, you're a bit dehydrated and you're really hot and your hands get clammy and really swollen. That's how my hands feel pretty much all the time now. Um, as you can see, I've had to take off my rings because they don't fit anymore. None of my other, you know, stylish rings fit either. So, yeah, I've just, my hands just really swell up and are sore. Um, but it, that is all just normal in pregnancy. Um, but a lot of people have said that it's their feet, not their hands. But for me, it's the other way around. So, really odd, but... Um, yeah, I thought I'd mention that. And um, what I have been doing um, the last couple of days is been getting Craig to kind of just give me a bit of a hand massage and it just seems to relieve the the pain a little, little bit. I wouldn't say it's pain, it's just uncomfortable. Um, but if I'm moving around, I kind of don't notice it as much and you just get on with it. But sitting here, it's just, it's just hard to even squeeze my hand sometimes. It's just sore. So um, yeah, that's something else that has been coming up in my third trimester. So I think that's everything that I can think of for the third trimester that I've been going through. And this is just kind of a, you know, really laid back update of how things have been going. So like I said, I'm actually 35 weeks at the moment. Um, a lot of people think I'm going to be early, but we'll see. Um, but I wanted to get this video done so that um, I have it ready for um for you guys so that you know you don't you, you don't miss out on it um and it's up and ready for you because like i said i am batch creating content to ensure that i still have content going up when um baby comes so i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on any other videos and yeah until my next video i'll see you next time guys Mwah.